transport yourself sort of ten years ago, Dave, like in your mind, yeah, and like experience what you're seeing now, like with your mind ten years ago, with the realization that all this is your hard work. Wouldn't have believed it. Wouldn't how does that make? How does that make you feel? Yeah, crazy. Oh, hello. Hello. How's your tank? It's alright. Bit overgrown at the moment. <laughs> Oh, you're like Tom, he's not maintained this yeah, tank. Yeah, we either. just get filmed by yours and then... That's it, they get their tanks really nice with my channel and then they just like f*** off. I'll beat that bit out. Uh, here we go. If we just speak close to the microphone. Okay. Yeah. Let us know in the comments what this is. Yeah. There's definitely something to be said for the process of, get, you know, a beginner going through those stages. Yeah and making those mistakes and actually you'll learn from that and become a better aquascaper just through trial and error. What's going on? You've got some Monstera up here. Yeah, so we're taking down another tank that had it growing in it. And uh, that was from it. here, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh wow, so you're taking all the immersed stuff out. <clears throat> yeah, this is actually being dismantled tomorrow. So. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and this one here, your one. Oh, so, sad face. Yeah, I know. It's had its time. It's been really good. It's always like the rebirth, something new. It's quite exciting. Exactly, it's an opportunity. It's served its purpose, I guess. Yeah. How, lo how long? Two years? 18 months? Two years. Almost two years. It's really introduced a lot of people to carpeting the Hydrocotyl Vertical Alata, I think. Yeah, it has. It's made it massively popular. Um, you notice more sales in the store because of that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but we want to carry it on. We didn't want to lose, ah, we didn't want to lose it. So recycling it. Yeah. I love that. So this had um, uh, gravel all the way along here. Yes. And so I siphoned that out. Yeah. Took the vertical out there at the tank and planted it in some soil. Perfect. Nice. This is like almost meant to be that I came in just now as you've just made all these changes. I know because it's actually plan. really, we're really literally in the middle of doing the changes, aren't you? Yeah. So this is really great for people to I've, see. I've only just done this today. So. Wow, that's really coincidental. Yeah. The monstera, I, I love this going up here. Yeah. So I've atta attached it with some little cable ties, just three. Is it Monstera? Long. Yeah, Monstera yeah. Minima. Is yeah. it? Okay. I really it's need Swiss to... cheese plant, I think. Yeah, it's very popular, very easy, I think. Yeah, a it is. Very I love the, um, you can say it's Swiss cheese because of the holes, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. that's why it, where it gets its name from, actually. Yeah, yeah very cool. I got bit, I'm not sure what this is. No, I did, uh, I think I originally called this philodendron, but someone told me off, yeah. so I don't think it is that. Let us know in the comments. So you've got the full emergent growth growing on, like absolutely terrestrial plant. Yeah. And then you go to kind of emergent growth, which is this, what, is this Hemianthus coming out of here? Yeah, this is Hemianthus microanthemoides, but like emergent. Yeah, so. coming out of the And then you've got obviously the floating plant. This is Amazon frog bit. Yeah. But this is actually almost growing kind of Some, above a float. You know what I mean? It's Some almost growing kind emergent. of attaching to the wood and growing on itself as well. Yeah. So. Really good example of the power of plants. You know how they can... <laughs> They just adapt, don't they, to yeah. whatever they throw at them. Survival. Maybe out of water, underwater. Oh, obviously some plants can't survive underwater, but yeah. Really, yeah. Interesting, really interesting. Cool, man. So what else have we what done else differently? Done so, yeah. Yeah. Some albeda brown down there. There was a bit of bulbitis that was struggling on this branch. Here okay, because of the lack of light, I guess. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, so that albeda brown came out of your tank that we're taking down as well. Yeah. Behind that, we just planted some fresh polysperma. Oh, interesting. Which I really think live like brightens up that corner. Yeah. Kind of light shade of green. Yeah. Yeah, because you are running quite low levels of light anyway, aren't you, on the max well, lights? We yeah. were, we were interestingly, but um, old Vitus looks a lot, lot better under high lights. Right. Okay. So we've I've gently increased it, and this is now actually on as of today on full brightness. Oh, interesting. Cool. So what was it running on at its lowest? At its lowest was on fifty percent. Fifty percent. That's what, eight hours a day. Uh, four to begin with, and now it's, now it's running at six. Six, okay. So that is quite on the low. Most people run sort of eight, don't they? Like, yes, yeah. because it's so epiphyte heavy, you don't want to too much like Yeah, it's just a bit of balance, really. Yeah. It's quite a slow growing. And when, when, was, when was the actual, when did we set it up originally? I, I think it was uh, October. Okay, so we're uh, six months then? At least, yeah, six months or so, yeah. yeah. Nice, we did say at six months it's going to. It's not to look good, yeah. yeah. That's great. It's great to see it kind of evolve, not just in terms of plant growth, but as you as you get used to the different conditions and everything kind of um, 
has more impact. So, for instance, yeah. over here, we had too little light. Yeah. So you had to make changes, and that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing starts off 100% perfect, does no, it? I don't yeah, think it's okay tank, to evolve your aquascape. I don't think any tank will go exactly how you planned it. And sometimes, you know, little fortunate opportunities come or something happens. Happy and accidents. You, happy accidents, exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of what happens with most tanks, and certainly with this tank. We've added some... Hydrocostal tripetita as well. Yeah. Just with the, fast plant growth. Yeah. Is that the mini or the normal? That's the normal one. Nice. Um, yeah, I was thinking about this the other day because with um, aquascapers now, and if you're lucky enough to be a new aquascaper coming into the community now, um, there's so much great information out there, isn't there? And so much great technology, and it's really easy to find all of this. And it's really relatively straightforward for a beginner to have great success quite quickly would you say i would say so yeah i mean the the, the right advice the right equipment yeah and there's yeah the, the equipment these days has come a long way the advice and the information that's available on the likes of youtube online forums yeah. etc it is easy to, to do your research quite quickly yeah. find out what you need how you need to do it yeah and have success, yeah. which is great. How about, okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate here yeah. and say as a flip side to that, and beginners can potentially uh, find great success um, relatively quickly. Uh, I get this sense of, um, you know, satisfaction because they've had such great success so quickly. And then with combining that with the uh, prolific use of social media, for instance, Instagram, Okay, yeah. so let's say you're a, a fairly new scaper, uh, you have great success because you have some great advice and, and great uh, kind of uh, use of, you know, the decent equipment, etc. And you get really, get this first scape and it's absolutely brilliant. And then you have the opportunity to do something on your own after that. And you have to kind of stretch your own creativity rather than relying on someone else's. Yeah. But you've built up this kind of expectation in your own mind and maybe from other people's minds because you're on instagram now yeah, yeah but you've kind of built this like oh sh i've got to get to this high level now because i've created it yeah. on my first go and they haven't like i'm not saying that's a bad or a good thing i'm just saying it's an interesting thing that i haven't ever experienced maybe you haven't because no. we kind of we started 10 20 years ago in the hobby, yeah. where we had to kind of grind it out through forums and yeah. and then kind of kind of do things much more slowly and, error, make, and make your own mistakes and, yeah. and and so I'm not saying one path is right and one path is wrong or, or anything. I'm just saying there's a, a very yeah. different path uh, to to achieve a similar level of success. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's necessarily uh, always, a good thing. always a good thing. Yeah. I think I think there's definitely something to be said for the process of, get, you know, a beginner going through those stages yeah. and making those mistakes, and actually you'll learn from that and become a better aquascaper just through trial and error. And I always try to point that out to people that is, you know, expectations don't always set them too high. I yeah. would say yeah. because you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you should be able to go through the process of making a mistake. And, it, and, and figuring out what you have to do to make that thing better or make that thing right or make that thing work. Yeah. And um, so, so, so it is, it's literally putting the work in, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And I actually find that part that part actually really fun as well. That yeah. can be a, a really interesting fun part. It doesn't have to be, oh, I've got algae or something's gone wrong, this is yeah. terrible. This can be a problem-solving well, exercise. Yeah, I think that's a great point. If you, you can reframe a problem... Yeah. to make it fun can't exactly. you say so i've got algae now rather than thinking like the world's ending and you're a failure as a person you know oh, i'm terrible at looking after my aquarium i've got algae now you can reframe it and think this is an opportunity to use this learn from it what did i do what did i do wrong to get the algae in the first place what am i going to do now to get rid of the algae what am i going to do in the longer term to prevent the algae from coming back yeah. that all that process you've learned so much yeah and you haven't necessarily relied on a one shot solution like you know maybe a chemical solution or yeah. you know um you know just buying an algae eating fish or something yeah. you've actually grinded out a, a, a problem yeah um using more kind of discipline yeah. and uh harder work which in my view you feel a bigger sense of accomplishment yeah from that. yeah well, i was about to say the satisfaction from that can actually be greater than the instant yeah Thing, so. And I think this, and this is the interesting thing again about social media, is that it kind of relies on the human 
nature desire to have instant gratification. Yeah. I think we've got a sense of responsibility to kind of get these more important lessons, I would suggest, in aquascaping across, that you shouldn't necessarily rely on, uh, you know, a blanket, one shot, a easy, fast, instant solution to yeah. a problem, you know. And I think you can apply that, not just in aquascaping, but, you know, to a lot of, things, a yeah. lot of you know, aquascaping is aquascaping, but it's, um, it's a metaphor, I think, for, for a lot of deeper yeah. topics. And uh, totally. the more I get kind of, you know, I've always been a hobbyist, yeah. you know, and I've always kind of understood aquascaping on the surface level. It's a beautiful hobby that you're keeping a, a beautiful plant in an aquarium with beautiful fish. But actually, what is it doing you know, doing to you beyond that. What, why are we aquascaping? And I think there's some real, you know, deeper work that we can do there. And it's sort of, for me, I, I feel it just connects me with nature. And then you can dive into that topic, you know, as deep as you like. But um, yeah, but it's all about this, isn't it? It's all about what we're saying right now. Uh, and uh, it, yeah. can, it can start conversations, it can start friendships. It is, uh, it, in your home, it is the, could be the centerpiece. And like you say, people can come over, talk about it yeah. you can inspire them it can add to your home it's home a great decor, conversation starter isn't it Have you, huge yeah. we've got some of your fish in here since i lost so is it so pay yeah yeah so i asked our asked ty street when you're our, our, our fish on hand fish expert yeah and uh yeah he suggested the uh the serpent tetras because in big groups um often can be like a, an aggressive fish in small numbers i think some fish can yeah. but uh, in big groups in large tanks uh they're very very happy oh, and very less, less, less aggressive. Very natural swimming pattern. Yeah. And then I think they've been acting as dither fish, haven't they? And then encouraging the other fish to come out. And yeah, so the pencils great. that were a bit timid and the other tetras, um, mind you, they've got away now, but they have brought them out a lot to, a lot more. So, yeah, great choice. Awesome, Mel. Well, thank you for looking after it so well. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Um, so which one's Pavel scaping? Yeah, this one here. The nice. So you're going to tear this one down? Yeah, this one's going down next week. Should so. shotgun the Book of Philandra. Yeah, all right, you're going to be the first. <laughs> this, what's Tom thinking? Is he like, you have some of these spare plants, are you? Uh, Should I have a chat with Tom? Tom yeah. Tom's been on the channel, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how has things gone since we featured your video? Um, well, I haven't really done a lot of maintenance since then. Oh, I've really? A lot of college work to get to the end of the year. But, oh, okay. Um, have you got a yeah, recent so photo of it? Not really. This is embarrassing. Um, I'm going to have to shut the video now. Mm, yeah, just cut this bit out. Cut. <laughs> cut. Cut, cut. But are you still yeah, enjoying the hobby? Yeah, yeah, really enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you still enjoying working here? Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can tell me the truth if I've stopped filming. <laughs> yeah, just cut, cut that bit out. Cut. Yeah. Uh, Dave's all right, isn't he? He's a good boss. Yeah, yeah. It's really good working here. Yeah, really enjoy it. I really love it here. It's really yeah. good. good Help, up. please. <laughs> There's a sign, like holding a little sign. <laughs> Ah, uh, cool, man. Okay, uh, but let's look at it. Look at it from a distance. So this is the biggest in the store. Then this is quite new, Dave. Yeah. So yeah, four, four or five weeks old. Actually, for twelve hundred. Because this had your island. This was originally like an island composition with lilies. You've uh, gone, yeah, lilies, loads, and loads of stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's like, crazy. Yeah. And now you've got. I've got an emphasis really on the on the lilies though in the background and this one and the moss. Yeah. Java moss as well. I know, I saw your post earlier, so I highlight ICA2. I've, I've never grown Java moss recently, anyway, for my escaping days, but that yeah. is probably one of the best attaching mosses is you, can, you can get. You need to use it more, because people yeah. are just like assuming the newer, newer mosses are the best. Actually, I think the classic plants, you know, like the old school plants. Some of them just get forgotten about. Yeah. You know, like Glossostigma, that's been forgotten about. Yeah, Glossostigma, yeah. Yeah, and that was the first actual carpeting plant I succeeded with. Yeah. I actually used DIY CA2 on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool, man, all right, we'll call it a close there, Dave. Just an impromptu vlog. I know you're a busy man. No, you're welcome. Yeah. So let us know in the comments whether you think I should keep the Monstera on the tank, whether it adds to it or detracts from it. That's a good idea, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Does the Monstera look good or not? I reckon most people are going to say it looks good. I think it looks good. What do you think, Tom? I like it, yeah. I like it. Do you like it, Dave? Yeah, I was a bit undecided at first, but it's grown. You know, uh, I think it was just a change, so just taking it in. <laughs> yeah, you have to get your reframe your kind of what you're used to, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right, mate. Thanks as always. Um, for those that don't know, just check out Aquarium Gardens on Instagram, website, Facebook, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, WhatsApp. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, those last three I don't know about, but the others, nah, yeah, there's, there's a lot, <laughs> definitely. All right, mate, take care. Take care. Cheerio, guys. Cheerio. Keep that, what they say? Oh, hello. Hello. How's your tank? It's all right. It's a bit overgrown at the moment. <laughs> Oh, you're like Tom, he's not maintained this <laughs> yeah, tank. Yeah, we either. just get filmed by yours and then just... So, like, <laughs> that's it. They get their tanks really nice for my channel and then they just, like, f*** off. <laughs> I'll beat that bit out. Yeah, I'll leave it. Right. Cheerio. <laughs> Transport yourself sort of, 10 years ago, Dave, like, in your mind. Yeah. And, like, experience what you're seeing now, like, with your mind 10 years ago, with the realisation that all this is your hard work. Wouldn't have believed it. How does that, that make you feel? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, when you think back, you, you yeah, wouldn't believe it. Because you kind of take it for granted when you turn up to the same thing every day, day in, day out, and you do the same activity, it becomes normalised. Yeah, because you've seen it progress day by day. If I went from day one to now, yeah. I'd just be like, wow. Yeah, because the, uh, the, the, the very, very small incremental changes happen daily it, it's imperceptible isn't it i guess yeah. whereas yeah if you're transported from 10 years ago to now it would blow your mind i think it's a useful exercise though to kind of visualize that uh relationship of where you are now to where you were a certain amount of time ago and and think about how far we've come you know as, as humans and people on different journeys um yeah it's just an interesting way of looking at it and i think you can use a metaphor uh, for uh, you know aquascaping for this because you see a an aquascape grow in you know from nothing you know blank slate into something like this in six months you know and I think that's uh, something to be uh, you know it's just very interesting. That's one of the, mate, the nicest things for me about aquascaping. Yeah, is that long term journey with it? Yeah, and seeing not, it seeing it evolve. Seeing it evolve, it's not an instant thing. And you really learn to appreciate your aquascape as it gets better and develops over time. That's probably one of the most enjoyable, probably the most enjoyable thing for me.